Good morning. I want to talk about an image that I see being posted around the internet about the grips. And although it is correct in demonstrating where your hand is on the racket, what's wrong with the image is that the racket is being shown stable, looking upright, and the hand is migrating around the grip to demonstrate the position. And why that's wrong is your hand position doesn't actually change. So here I am in Continental. It's the racket head that changes. My hand doesn't change position. There's semi-western, there's eastern, there's continental. My hand stays virtually the same when I'm holding the racket, but the racket moves into a different position. Now the demonstration online, the image that I've seen and was brought to my attention by my students, created some controversy and uh, some clarification. So the image online shows a grip of a continental and then it leaves the racket in this position and it shows the person rolling their hand over into an eastern. Let me turn it this way. So now I'm in eastern. Maybe that's not the right way to do it. Eastern here. There we go. So continental Eastern, semi-Western. Look what I'm having to do with my hand to get those positions and understand that grip. So what my students are looking at, they're asking me, well, I'm using semi-Western, but is the racket flat? Am I just hitting a continental racket path using a grip that causes my wrist to turn into this position. Let's go back to Eastern, and we'll go back to Continental. We'll bring that up again a little bit so you can see it. So Continental, Eastern, Semi-Western. That is a problem. My wrist and my hand at this point should not change. It remains the same. And I'll demonstrate this with an important point with a mistake we make with the semi-western grip. You'll be able to see it, but here I am in Continental. I'm going to move the racket now. The left hand is the steering wheel, remember, to change the grip. Now my knuckle is on this edge. I'm in Eastern. Now I turn the racket with my left hand again. The right hand stays the same. My knuckle is on this outer side here. Position one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, that makes it into semi-western. The image again is doing it incorrectly where the racket is stable and they're just moving the hand around the grip. This is where it's a problem. But this is also an interesting fundamental that happens when we're learning the semi-western anyway. We're gonna use my fingertips as a reference. When I'm in continental, do you see my fingertips? No. When I'm in Eastern, do you see my fingertips? No. When I'm in Semi-Western, do you see my fingertips? No. When a player is learning the stroke and they've got the racket in the position, the backswing position, you shouldn't see your fingertips. Let's look at that again. If we looked at the relationship online with the demonstration where the hand is being moved around the racket, this is incredibly difficult. And all I've done is I've hit, I've put my wrist and hand in a different position to accommodate a continental racket position. When the racket is straight up and down, this is a continental racket position. I'm making it very difficult for myself. Well, guess what? This is all too common with players. When they are learning the semi-western, and oftentimes the eastern too, 
Let's not limit it to the semi-western. Let's talk about the eastern as well. But in this demonstration, it will be the semi-western. The failure is they're, they're using their wrist to accommodate the racket position and get it into a continental position while believing that they are doing something fancy with a semi-western grip. Let me go back here and demonstrate what happens. So I'm going to use a semi-western grip. That's where the racket is almost as if I picked it up like a pancake. My knuckle is on the one, two, three, fourth edge of the racket, straight out in front of me. Here we go. The path of the semi-western, remember, in my demonstrations, it's fence, slide, and swing. Okay, here comes the, uh, the important truth. We're going to use my fingertips as a marker. Most players are getting that racket into the correct position up above. But then guess what they're doing? They're rolling the racket over. Look at my fingertips. My fingertips are up. Now somebody's going to say, yeah, but we see this in images where we're online and we can see the players have their fingertips up. Aha! We need to look at where that is in the swing. It's in the completion of the swing. As they're moving forward, their fingertips are nowhere to be seen. Now let me see if I can do that up close. So we're looking at the fingertips. So as my racket is here, if I turn the racket over, fingertips are up, that is incorrect. This is just using a continental racket position with a semi-western grip to strike the ball, flat as flat can be. Maybe I'm dropping it and coming up. Okay, that's part of the problem as well. It is a solution to the semi-western, but it doesn't happen from this point in our backswing. Those fingers should not be visible. Let's look at it again from a correct position. Racket is up as we slide. You see my fingertips? You see my fingertips? Oh, my fingertips are down here. As I go into the ball forward, look at the racket still looking down. Aha! Now you see my fingertips later in the swing. It didn't happen back here as I'm dropping the racket down. And as I come through, it's at the end. This gives me, look at the action of the racket. The racket is looking down and as I come forward, it naturally opens. Oh, this is the brush. This is the point where I'm below the ball and coming up. Let's back up. Let's look at how it's inappropriately taught and looked at. The racket goes up. I'm going to turn the racket over. I'm just in a continental grip. My fingers are up and I'm swinging straight across. I've used virtually a continental racket position with a semi-western grip. What advantage is that? And it's very difficult to get any good action on the ball. And this is where we get the old windshield wiper and timing that and uh, the energy now is going up and over, up and over. Where's the energy? The energy is going this way instead of out in the direction I need to be driving the ball. The correct method really addresses the elbow and the shoulder. As the racket goes back, I'm not going to tip it over to show you my fingertips. As the racket goes back, I'm going to drop my elbow back, which brings the racket head down. It also keeps my fingertips down and my hand is virtually in the same position it started with. It's the same position we used when I was describing the Eastern, the Continental, back to the Semi-Western. Let's look at that again from the back side so you can see what my elbow is doing. You see my hand in this position here as it goes away from me, same position. As I get here, I'm going to draw the elbow back and the shoulder, 
keeps my hand with the fingertips in that downward position. As I swing, I haven't seen my fingertips yet, but now as I'm brushing up on the ball, there's my fingertips. And this is the image that we usually see the players when we look at a captured picture and everybody says, well, their fingertips are up. Yes, it's at the end of the swing. So let's look at that again. It's down, it's through. I'm getting the elbow to drop the racket and the shoulder. This is also called a quick stretch. As a therapist, my patients, we use a technique called a quick stretch to elicit a muscle contraction. Well, guess what? We can do it right here in tennis as well. If I quickly draw my arm back, the muscle spindles being stretched elicit a tremendous amount of power to, it's a load, to blast forward into my swing. So there is a, an advantage to getting some power behind your swing using this quick stretch in the shoulder. Since we're on the subject of uh, semi-Western using this demonstration with the fingertips, let's look at that a little bit more. I'm gonna back up here. Uh, let's see if I can find a good position for you. How I teach the semi-Western, you've got the semi-Western grip. The racket goes up on what I call the fence, just as if you've laid it up on the fence and if it, as it goes up on the fence, the elbow of your hitting arm, the right arm, and the shoulder are going to draw back. This is the quick stretch in the shoulder. Draws back. There's the load. Draws back. Let's turn this way. Draws back. Pull up a uh, video of Nadal. And uh, I'll try and recreate his. He's using an extreme grip. He is using a grip that many club recreational players don't use. This is the full semi-western. But if you watch him, the racket is up as he turns. This isn't the beginning of his swing. He actually drops it quite low here. This is the beginning of his swing. He drops it. It's down here. He could actually probably just leave it here in this position. It's drawing the elbow back and the shoulder. So he's coming, he gets into position, he drops the elbow. This is the quick stretch and the load as he comes forward up and over. I don't have a reverse forehand, it's pretty extreme and I'm not sure that I did that entirely correct. But the backswing is the most important portion of it where you're allowing the racket to drop behind you with this elbow rather than, what do we teach our students? Inappropriately, rolling over, racket is still in a continental position, and then swinging through. That doesn't do a whole lot. We need to look at the finger orientation. Fence, drop the elbow drop the elbow behind. It's like I'm nudging somebody behind me. That's getting the elbow, the racket back in the right position creates that nice quick stretch in the shoulder, elbow back, and then I explode into my shot. And let's do that in slow motion. Elbow, my left arm's out of the way. Right, let's get the racket more in view, elbow. Look at the racket open up. Yes, my fingers are up at this point. Let's go back in time. No, they're not open. They're down below. They're down below. They're down below, down below, down below. I'll leave them open so we can see. There's my load. They're still down below. Ah, but at this point, they're up above. That's fine. They weren't up above in this position and I'm not swinging with a continental racket position with a semi-western grip. That is a huge mistake many players are making out on the court. They believe they're using the racket with a, uh, an extreme grip, but all they've done is they've used their wrist in a very difficult position to use a continental racket position. Let's go back to that image I talked about in the beginning. The image online that we often see as a reference tool keeps the racket 
in a continental position and rolls the wrist around the racket to demonstrate where the hand should be. This is inappropriate because it's showing a flexed wrist. Where if I'm in continental, let's look at my wrist here, I'm basically, let's see if that's a better view, I'm basically fingers down, the hand on top, the knuckle on that edge, continental. Oh, I'm gonna leave my left hand in the same place. The racket orientation changes, not my hand. There's Eastern, the racket orientation changes. There's semi-Western. I hope this helps and clear up some confusion. I may have spent a little more, I needed to spend a little more time demonstrating the, uh, the, the semi-Western. It was kind of a tease to another video that I'm working on with the quick stretch and load. Um, it's technical um, and it takes some time, but I think what you can do in the meantime is start looking at your semi-western and are you rolling the racket over inappropriately so that your fingers are up before you swing or are you keeping your fingertips down as you bring the racket into its loaded position before you swing that's a critical point that's a critical necessary path and technique of your racket if you want to master the semi-western grip Give that a shot, give that a shot, see if it helps you.